Panasonic just announced firmware update 1.2 for the Panasonic Lumix GH6. This is a cumulative update. So all those updates we got in firmware 1.1, which are a lot, are also included in this firmware update. So let's recap what firmware 1.1 included in case you forgot about that one. Firmware 1.1 addressed the following. When a raw image shot in high resolution mode was developed using raw development software, there were cases where false color occurred in the developed image. This issue has been resolved. Firmware 1.2 for the GH6 doesn't provide us with any new capabilities or any major enhancements to existing capabilities. It does fix a couple of issues dealing with color casting and video shift, which I'll get to shortly. I think Panasonic feels that in the Lumix GH6, they gave us pretty much everything but the kitchen sink, all the video modes, the improvements in bit rates, color. For the average videographer or filmmaker, it's truly an amazing camera update. And even the autofocus system got major improvements. And I, I know there's gonna be some comments down below about the autofocus system, but what I'm looking for from you is, what would you like to see Panasonic Lumix give us in future firmware updates for the GH6? What would you like to see enhanced? What new capabilities would you like to see added? Let me know in the comments section down below. But now let's take a look at those fixes to video shifting and color casting. So the following issues were fixed. There were cases where magenta or green cast was seen on live view image during photo shooting or video recording. That's been fixed. And when video is recorded in 5.7K or 5.8K with a wide angle lens and the e-stabilization in video is set to on, there were cases where a particular part of the video frames were vertically shifted throughout the footage depending on the focal length. Annoying, but that has been fixed in this firmware update too. Certainly annoying, but that's been fixed in this firmware update too. So we get a couple of solid fixes. This is the second firmware update after it was announced in February, but we shouldn't really be surprised by this. All these frequent firmware updates that we're seeing on the Canon R5, the R6, the 1DX3, 1DX Mark III really started with Panasonic and their Lumix cameras. Panasonic and Lumix are known for constantly providing enhancements and cap new capabilities in their firmware updates, not just bug fixes. So we're just out of the gate here. We've had two firmware updates and they're mostly dealing with, well, things that didn't go quite well, things that need to be fixed and addressed. I'm really curious to know what kind of new capabilities or enhancements they're gonna provide in future firmware updates. I have no doubt that they're gonna to continue to tweak and adjust the autofocus system, but will they provide a new phase detect autofocus system? Well, based on what Lumix said in an interview in a live stream about a month ago, it's certainly something they're looking into. Um, although why they didn't do it for the GH6 or the new S series is a little bit beyond me because if they're aware it's such a big deal, and I think, he, I can't remember the gentleman that spoke, maybe his name was Pat, but anyways, the, the, I did a video on it and the essence of what he said, he spoke for a good five minutes or so saying that they are listening to people and they want to prioritize video making, filmmaking, and autofocus was one of those things that was kind of left off but it's certainly something on their radar. It's certainly something they're thinking about that they're aware about, they understand. Personally, I would love to see the move to a face detect autofocus system. We're not gonna see that in a firmware update. The GH6 is a very, very powerful camera. And if you're poo-pooing the GH6 because of the autofocus system, you gotta understand that if you look beneath the autofocus for a minute, think manual focus and think of all the capabilities that the camera does offer. It doesn't matter that it's not full frame, that it's not a super 35 sensor. GH6 is a very, very powerful camera and, and videographers and filmmakers around the world use it for production quality content. It really is a solid camera and I get it if it's not right for you and I get it if you love it and you can't imagine anything else because it is truly an amazing camera and I love how Panasonic really started this, not a process, but how they just started constantly providing firmware updates to provide not only fixes, but enhancements and new capabilities and I'm glad to see Canon doing it too, but many of you out there have been asking me, well, what about a firmware update for the Nikon Z6 and Z7 Mark II? We haven't really heard anything. And many of you have been humming and hawing about a firmware update for the Sony A7S III to bring some new enhancements to lens compensation or to provide some of the latest firmware updates, sorry, the latest updates to autofocus, providing animal eye detection to update the a7s3 because we've seen a lot of updates in other cameras look at the r5 when it first came out it had a pretty good and solid autofocus system but with the nikon z9 and other cameras coming out it started to look a little bit old in the tooth canon in firmware 1.4 came out with an, an update to the autofocus system that really updated 
the autofocus system uh, to be able to track people in cars, um, their head, the helmet, uh, to be able to improve overall autofocus detection of the subject, eye and face detection, overall improvements to the autofocus system. And that's really wonderful to see. So a lot of people have been asking, hey, where's the love for the A7S III? Are we going to get a firmer update there to enhance that? And of course, people who bought the Alpha 1 are also wondering, where's our firmware update? When are we going to get some enhancements? And it's been a little bit late to that. Just keep in mind, prior to Lumix coming out with their frequent firmware updates, it was pretty uncommon to get a firmware update on a camera. And if it did come out, it was usually rather boring. It didn't provide any new capabilities or enhancements, and it usually fixed issues that, well, were causing their customer call centers headaches and supporting, spending a lot of time supporting it. I remember the 70D that I still have here. It got, I think, a total of three firmware updates, and none of them were exciting in any way whatsoever. Lumix started this frequent firmware updates to provide additional capabilities and enhancements to existing capabilities in a way that dramatically changed what the camera could do today from what it could do when it was first released. And I'm glad to see that Canon has taken on that process or the way of thinking that strategic tactical approach to their cameras because the R5 has dramatically changed from when it first came out. Canon Log3 is a huge benefit. That log profile, why it doesn't give us that much more dynamic range than Canon Log1. It's certainly easier to grade. And yes, Canon Log2 does give us more dynamic range, but it's a lot harder for the ordinary filmmaker to grade. And yes, I would love to see Canon Log2 give the user the choice between one, two, and three. They also provide us with more film modes and resolution. So the ability, the ability to be able to shoot 120 frames per second in 1080, improved autofocus system, uh, cinema gamma along with Canon Log3 because you know, you've got your Y, your luminance, but what about your color? And that's where cinema gamma comes in with your CR and CB. And of course, Canon Log3 provides your luminance. It, it's just been a whole host of firmware updates. And of course now, and this is very rare in a camera that has dual card slots to be able to record video to both card slots at the same time. All of them allow you to record stills to both card slots at the same time, but most cameras that have dual card slots only allow you to record stills, not video. So firmware 1.4 also allowed us to be able to record video to both cards at the same time, up to 4K 30. I haven't tried 4K 60, but I know it definitely doesn't do 8K. So some really exciting updates. As soon as I hear anything about any firmware updates for the Alpha 1, the A7S 3 the Nikon Z6 Mark II, the Nikon Z6 Mark VII, or any other camera, I'll be sure to post them here on this channel. I know they don't often get a lot of news, except for the R5 one. That video is over 20,000 views for some reason. I don't know why. It's a firmware update. But anyhow, subscribe and choose all notifications. So that way, as soon as the video comes out, you're going to be notified. So you're getting the latest news. So stay tuned, subscribe, and like. And um, thank you very much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.